America's most iconic delivery system, Grumman LLV, and I apologize if I mispronounced that. We've all seen the funny little mail truck. We've all seen, you know, it do its rounds, do its things. I figure if that electrician has something to say about it, I'm in. Let's get into it, shall we? Every single time I try to make a funny, lighthearted video, it gets completely unhinged. That's that's how you start a video. See, that that's how you get your attention. Me starting this video, we've all seen the funny little mail truck. That's how you kill retention. That's how you grab retention. You have a hook. You, you get that. I love it. This is going to be a good one. Today, we're talking about Northrop Grumman's most iconic vehicle of all time. <laughs> Every aviation nerd just sat forward in their chair because if I don't pick their favorite Northrop Grumman plane, they're going to roast me in the comments section. Because if you don't know, Northrop Grumman is a defense contractor primarily known for making war planes, and they've created some of the most iconic and effective war planes the world has ever seen. Some of those planes include... Oh, no. We're about to get controversial, aren't we? <laughs> Meanwhile, me sitting here eating popcorn, I have no idea what any of these are. <laughs> but to be fair, I also like learning about this. I watch Fat Electrician because I genuinely learn a lot from him. He has a, v a way with words and is very, very good at what he does. The F4F Wildcat, the F6F Hellcat, America's Gun with Wings, the A10 Warthog. Mm, bathtub with a rotary cannon. <laughs> well, not a rotary cannon. Backed up with the minigun that stalls out the plane. The B-21 Stealth Bomber. Oh, wow. And its replacement, the B-21 Raider. I don't think I actually heard about the Raider. How recent was this? That's interesting. Highly classified. <laughs> but all of these pale in comparison to Northrop Grumman's most iconic and durable vehicle of all time. A vehicle that was designed to perform its tasks swiftly despite snow or rain or heat or gloom of night. Raptor? The LLV. Fair. The Long Life Vehicle, a.k.a the mail truck you know what based actually the mail truck is now my favorite grumman vehicle and now i'm gonna get a lot of hate comments I, i'm already calling this <laughs> no to be fair these things they work they go you You're could mount serious. you could mount an a10 warthog minigun on that couldn't you easily you could kit that that thing could have so many accessories <laughs> You've got to be shitting me. I shot down three megs and one Yeah, the same people that made like half the planes in U.S. military history also made your friendly neighborhood mail truck. I can only imagine that the U.S. Postal Service put out a memo like, hey, we're looking for a vehicle to help deliver packages. And the U.S. government was like, oh, package, payload, potato, potato, same thing. Call up Northrop Grumman. They're really good at delivering that type of stuff. So you have to understand, and in the U.S., mail is still kind of one of those sacred things. Like... It is a felony, as far as I'm aware, to say if I were to go into my neighbor's mailbox, right, and I were to take mail or uh, do anything with their mail, right, tamper with packages, envelopes, steal it. As far as I'm aware, that's a felony. Mail is really one of those sacred things still in the U.S. You just don't mess with somebody's mail. You, you really don't. And that's why when certain things pop up, like anthrax and envelopes, or you get people that are stealing Amazon packages in the area, or, you know, any number of things, right? That's when people start to get a little testy. And there was a, a, the privatization of the postal service, you know, in regards to, I think it was like swapping over to UPS and stuff specifically, was such a hotly, you know, just debated issue. And I would argue incredibly controversial because, you know, people need to get their stuff. Like... It's not an easy job. From everything I understand, the post office is not an easy job. But man, is it? It's really necessary, though. It really is. Okay, Northrop Grumman's used to putting warheads on foreheads. Now they're putting parcels on porches. It's the yeah. same thing. Now all I need is same for thing. Lockheed yeah. Martin to start making action figures, and my life will be complete. You put we need Lockheed Martin to make, like, well, what would Lockheed Martin make? They need to make, like, the, you know, when you go to uh, get your t uh, oil changed? Car lifts, that's the one. When uh, the, the mechanic has to actually lift your entire car off the ground using their rack, they need to make that. That's the one. Put munitions, chips, and toys? Yeah. Standard issue is insufficient. Okay, all jokes aside, I'm actually legitimately upset that this thing is named the LLV. I mean, it's made by Northrop Grumman, the makers of the F4F Wildcat and the F6F Hellcat, and you didn't name this the Mail Cat? Are I'm, actually, I'm actually upset about this now. I'm going to be honest, I'm actually angry now. Like, that is such a missed opportunity. Are you fucking kidding me? Did you forget to do the ad? No, I did the ad. Thanks for finally being in a YouTube video with a shirt on for once. Nice. You're welcome. I love their dynamic.
Like their entire dynamic just looks just that healthy relationship goals. Fat electrician and his SO. Like just mm. I'm very happy for them. Like I'm so used to social media where there's so many toxic like partners and so many toxic situations. It's very refreshing to just see a healthy relationship. It's so cool. Nice thong, Borat. Oh, I thought that was part of the shirt. I thought that was part of the shirt. About to get some comments now, don't I? Yes, yes. The meme about me being combat sexual is in fact a thing. I get far more enjoyment out of wearing armor getting whacked on the side of my ribs. This video is brought to you by Zydax. <laughs> custom gaming PCs are all made right here in America with American tech support. They can do any type of customization you want, or they have pre-built ones ready to ship right now. And then we have one of our newest sponsors, Zaka Life Recovery Bomb. It's made right here in America, and it's the best thing I've found for aches, pains, and athletic injuries. It blows every other topical treatment I've ever tried out of the water. I'm going to have both those sponsors and discount codes linked down below. Let's get back to the video. You know, like... I hardly ever see double or at least multiple ad reads. I actually really, really like it. So hear me out on this, right? Like, how many times do you watch a video and it'll be, you know, oh, we're talking about this subject today. And, you know, this is what about this? The great mystery of your life. And there's a word from our sponsors today. We're talking about right? and how it just kind of breaks the flow of that one. He retains the flow. He already has a good hook. I'd argue the second hook was what I thought was her shirt. Classic Kip moment. Happens more often than you'd realize. Uh, and he has his hooks into the video. Very funny, very personable. And he goes into the ad reads. And the way he does the ad reads, I will continue to support good ad reads. It's very direct. It's very to the point. This is what you need to know. This is the product. You know, if you want the code, look in the description. Right? It's very quick, very personable, very direct. No BS. We need more ads read like this. That didn't take 30 seconds. Me talking about this about now would have been the ad read finished on another video, right? He is doing an amazing job of ad reads and is very direct. And if I ever have the fortune of having sponsor <laughs> for content that I do, uh, I, I will be looking to that electrician for inspiration because he has a direct, personable, no BS way of doing it that I very greatly admire. So after finding out that the mail truck that I've grown up with my entire life was actually made by Northrop Grumman, I decided, hey, I'm going to make a video on this. This is right. going to be hilarious. It's going to be lighthearted. It's going to be funny. It's going to be great. So I started looking up the specs. I started looking up the history, how this came to be. And then I asked myself one simple question. Wait a minute. Why on earth is a defense contractor making this little tiny car when an automotive contractor probably could have done the same thing better and probably cheaper? And uh -huh. per usual, to absolutely nobody's surprise, it's because once again, the government ruins everything. Yes. <laughs> a running theme here we do all right so let's take it from the top once upon a time in 1775 the united states continental congress says hey delivering mail is super duper important because we don't have email and phones and telegraphs yet and delivering no. letters is the only way that we can communicate so we need to establish a post office and we're going to take one of our smartest founding fathers benjamin franklin and make him the, the first face. postmaster general to figure this entire thing out then the government pretty much immediately decides hey we want this to kind of be a government agency but also we don't want to have to give it any tax money to be able to run itself so what we're going to do is we're going to make it a legal monopoly. We're going to go ahead and say that the U.S. Postal Service is the only entity that is legally allowed to deliver the mail. That way, the U.S. Postal Service is going to... But if we have UPS, FedEx, all these different services now, when was this overturned? That's really interesting, actually, to think about. That had to have been a recent thing. Fascinating. They're going to be guaranteed to get 100% oh, of the business. So they're recent. going to have enough money to be able to fund themselves and not have to rely on taxpayer money. And this is still going on to this day. This is a legally recognized and regulated monopoly. Buh! What about FedEx and UPS? Buh! That's actually good. Well, I mean, I wasn't going buh about that. Mostly, I'm just curious because, like, he, he, he's clearly he's bringing the reasoning. And this is why I like him. He'll, he, that, that is a hard hitting question. You see that I asked about this. I clearly didn't know. I'm, I'm learning things today. This is great. Good question out of you for once. So the monopoly only <laughs> applies to like letters and mail and shit like that. that Packages makes sense. are technically different and there's allowed to be commercial competition. Right, 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 right. Well, give me a second. 
I'm having to think back to the times that I've bought and shipped Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Naruto cards. Because they were... I mean, there were some in bubble mailers, absolutely, and that's how you ship stuff like that, generally. But sometimes they come in vanilla, vanilla envelopes. Fascinating. In there. That's why UPS and FedEx primarily only deliver packages. Now, right. I say usually because there is an exception that if you have something of vital importance that needs to be, like, overnighted to somewhere immediately, you are allowed to use FedEx or USPS to ship that if it's of vital importance. And I know what you're thinking. It seems like there's a pretty big gray area. That I think he means FedEx and UPS because he said USPS. To be fair, I get that mixed up all the time in conversation. There, I mean, who sets the criteria as to whether or not something is important enough to violate the U.S. Postal Service's legal monopoly and be able to use FedEx or UPS to send a letter or an important document? Well, obviously, that would be the U.S. Postal Service's in-house federal law enforcement agency, the Postal Inspectors. Hmm. I, I'm not shitting you. The mailmen have their own federal law enforcement agency. I had I had no idea. I knew about the postal inspectors. I just didn't know the full extent of their enforcement and overview. I actually didn't even know that. We're learning things today. This is why I like him. Great. Now, typically, the postal inspectors are doing really great things, like making sure that people aren't sending bombs or drugs through the mail or right. investigating people that have had their mail stolen, which, if you didn't know, is actually a federal crime. And yes. back in the day in 1775, when the post office and the postal inspectors were founded, Congress levied the death penalty for stealing mail. And while that's all yeah. fine and dandy, once in a while, the postal inspectors get a wild hair in their ass and they decide that they are going to enforce their legalized monopoly. For example, back in 1993, a big company called Equifax was using a private courier to to deliver all of their mail not just their packages wait a minute like the credit bureau equifax the one that gets hacked as far as i'm aware semi-regularly can't stand credit bureaus if there's one thing that they need to do one thing cybersecurity. and i know the people on the ground try so hard i know they're not paid enough and that's the issue is that everyone wants it everyone expects it but if you don't pay the right people it doesn't get done and because of this, the U.S. Postal Inspectors launched an armed raid of their company headquarters, determined <laughs> that their mail nice. wasn't important enough to be overnighted and that they were legally required to use the United States Postal Service Hell yeah. and then gave them a $30,000 fine. Yeah, if you live in America, that's $30,000, 1993 money. That is a lot more today. Still dropping the bucket. Don't get me wrong to a company that size. Wow, that is insane. And you run a business and you decide that you don't like using the United States Postal Service and you're going to exclusively try to use like FedEx or UPS or something. There is a greater than 0% chance that armed mailmen in body armor will show yeah. up to your headquarters and raid your business, tell you that's illegal, and then give you a fine. Okay, do But are they class four plates? What, what plates are we talking? <laughs> I've seen way too many TikTok memes. No, that that's fair. Well, and to the credit of USPS, I rarely have mail going missing. There's, I don't know, I always, like, when I buy trading cards and stuff, I have a very high percentage of my stuff always getting lost. And so the resolution always becomes, oh, let's give you a refund. And it's like, no, like, I want my stuff. Oh, let's give you a refund. I hate, I hate that refunds are just a get out of jail free card. Yeah, we're just going to just be done with this. I I'm start I I'm I'm kind of like I guess having refund fatigue, I guess if that makes sense. Cuz when everybody starts refunding you, it's just like, well, am I actually going to get a product or not? Anyways, that rant aside. No, like that makes a lot of sense actually. And, and to the credit of USPS, I mean, I've had a lot of transactions go through and a lot of stuff go through just fine, right? I've shipped cards back in the day. I've shipped cards to friends. I've shipped cards to people that have paid me, right? This is years ago for tax purposes, obviously. And like, I haven't, God, I haven't even shipped cards in a few years now. I think about it. Anyways, um, but yeah, no, it's it's one of those things that it's interesting to consider how important one mail is to USPS, as far as I've used it, is generally fairly reliable, if not more reliable than UPS in certain uh, situations that I personally have experienced. Well, I want to talk shit right now because that seems absolutely insane and ridiculous. Yeah, a little bit. Am I gonna? Absolutely not because they know where I live, okay? Yes. I didn't know they existed until yesterday and already Special Forces Mailman is on the top of my list of people I'm not gonna fuck with. Yeah. So everybody kind of already knows that being a mail carrier... Just don't and that's the thing is just don't mess with people's mail, right? I mean, if you have to ship something, I mean, at that point, I mean, 
you are relying on these third party services, UPS, FedEx, et cetera, right? To know what they're doing, to know the law and to operate within the bounds of the law. If you are purposely going out of your way to avoid using USPS, okay, maybe you're gonna run into some issues, right? In general, just, I don't know, just don't worry about it, I guess is the word. I guess is the phrase. Am I off base here? Barriers a government job, but most people don't understand to the extent that the U.S. Postal Service is its own government entity, so much so that it necessitates its own federal law enforcement agency. So going back to the Grumman... About two years ago, was this late 2021, I think? Well, over two years ago then. Wasn't there the, uh, on social media, someone had found, uh, had this weird key that they found attached to their package, was like magnetized to it. And somebody said, you need to turn that into the post office right now because someone's about to get fired. Because apparently it was like the master key to like every post box in that area, in that region or something like that. Like... They take that stuff seriously. And mail cat and the actual physical transportation of the mail, it always just kind of went with the times. Back in the 1700s when they were founded, it was delivered on horseback. When cars came out and they became more and more common, the post office began using more and more cars. Right. So the US Postal Service would just acquire whatever cars they needed whenever they needed them. And this went on for decades. But by the 1930s and 1940s, it was becoming a huge issue because the USPS had acquired a ton of different cars. They were all different makes. They're not all standardized. Models. They all drove different. They all had different carrying capabilities. They all required different mechanics, different parts. It was a huge logistical nightmare for this enormous fleet of vehicles. As well, right. It's imagine if you owned a business, right? And one of your and you have to you have you drive out to do your business, right? So you have a multitude of cars, right? You have some Volkswagens in there. You have some Nissans in there. You got some Chevys in there. You got a Hummer, right? You know, you have and sure, some things can be used for different things. So for marketing purposes say at a very high class event right something like that maybe like a golf tournament yeah maybe you could break out the hum the the hummer right yeah just have it there it's got its wrap on it cool but i mean like now imagine just okay well this volkswagen uh something's wrong with its axle and you have this chevy maybe it threw a rod you know uh, the uh uh ford's brake pads are going right and all these are gonna have different there's no standardization in there so if anything it, to even keep parts on hand just the parts right if you were to keep them on hand is going to be just a financial drain you don't have standardization in there and that's a problem i'm sure you could imagine it would be like a hundred times easier if all of the vehicles in the u.s postal fleet were the same exact thing and all had the same capability requiring the same replacement parts yes. the same type of mechanics and you could teach all the postal carriers how to drive one vehicle and one vehicle only so right. at the end of world war ii with hundreds of thousands of americans returning home and looking for jobs the united states postal service recognized a very unique opportunity with the willys motor company jeep because the jeep was being used by the u.s military there was already a ton being manufactured and a lot mm -hmm. of the people returning home from the military already knew how to drive it there was a ton of people qualified to work on them mechanically and there was a ton of excess parts around and with the military downsizing there was a huge surplus of them so it was a perfect fit in pretty much every way it is a rare case of the government doing something a hundred percent right and the united states postal service oh, no. adopted the jeep as their primary vehicle and okay. that worked for like 40 years but as the u.s got bigger and bigger with more and more people right. and people started sending more and more mail and more and more packages the capacity that the jeep could hold simply wasn't enough and the united states postal service wanted something that was capable of carrying more mail but you have to honestly a lot of things are uh, electric nowadays like they are just digital the thing that and i'm gonna rant for a second the thing that honestly pisses me off is all these third-party entities that have access to my information hey you could qualify for a thirty thousand dollar loan hey you could qualify for a twenty thousand dollar loan at like 28 percent. it's like why one how do you have my information two stop mailing me things three i'm just gonna shred your stuff anyways stop sending me this like it uh, it drives me up a wall and i feel that if we got a lot of information technology under control we could probably prevent a lot of that i mean it's different right if i go to say like a dealership and maybe the dealership sends me like an annual like letter like hey you know uh would love to see if you're looking at financing your next car you know we have new models out for this price right okay like i guess this kind of makes sense i mean even then bank statements and stuff i mean most of my statements are electronic at this point they're mostly just digital right so like we can even cut down on a lot of that it's i would argue that a lot of it at least in my own case personally is bogged down by people just sending chaff and it drives me up a wall because like out of like 10 letters that i'll get over the course of probably like a month or so right like maybe two are actually relevant 
which is a problem for me because it's like, okay, why am I getting 80% of my mail at this point? That is just people that have my information without them. Need, which you know, it goes back to, uh, yes, no country got bigger. U S got bigger. And you know, we're now reaching a point within God, the last 20 ish years that a lot of things are just now become, if anything, there's a push for things to become digital. How many of you are like, Oh, well I have to go and check my doctor's papers through my patient portal. Now, they, they're not going to give me anything anymore. They just say, go check the patient portal. And if you get your patient portal pass, and it's just like, well, I guess there's no access to that anymore. And everything is just online and it, oh, it drives me up a wall. Yeah, back to the post office. No, post office is legit. Post office deals with a lot of things. And our postal workers are very, very underappreciated. Remember, this is a government agency and they can't do anything simple when it comes to getting new equipment. So they can't just go over to like Ford or Chevy and be like, hey, build me a new mail truck. No, they have to figure out the exact specifications that they're looking for, and then they have to send it out to all the government contractors so that they can all put a bid in on it. That right. way, the government contractors can come in, do the exact bare minimum, and make a ton of money. I mean, yeah. let's just look at the LLV, for example. They wanted this thing to weigh a maximum of 3,000 pounds. Guess how much it weighs? Exactly 3,000 pounds. They wanted it to be able to carry a minimum of 1,000 pounds. Guess how much it can carry? 1,000. Exactly 1,000 pounds right. on the dot. They wanted it to be this tall, this wide this long and grumman came along and said dope i'm gonna make a metal fucking rectangle exactly that size throw an engine and some wheels on it and call it a good day they well so i i mean like there's difference between doing the bare minimum and then there's doing things to specification right so if i were to say i need to make a video reacting to final fantasy 14 a realm reborn right and i were to give these specifications to an editor right and i'm just like hey i need the video to be this long i need this many cuts in here this is the footage you're going to use i want this 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 and this right and they provide me just that in that case i mean they are doing it to my specifications now it's different if they say use some of the footage they do some wacky like max or style edits right that kind of thing and you know go above and beyond that's a little different because then that's them saying you know show showcasing the quality of their work so i think there's a difference between and it, 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 this line seems less of like a hard line and more of a soft line and i'm sure those of you that work certain industries and certain jobs you know, are going to know you know yeah no there is absolutely a difference between doing the bare minimum doing specifications and then over delivering to a degree or doing a good job right there's some grayness to these lines there so I mean, then again, I mean, it also comes down to quality, right? You know, people that have worked for uh, not only the military, but government jobs as well. I'm sure in the comments, you know, without breaking NDA or OPSEC, right? That, you know, no, these are in fact, while they're two specifications, these are in fact just the cheapest quality materials, right? We have the whole meme of civilians just, oh, they fawn over military grade. Everyone in the military goes, oh God, it's, that's going to be, that's going to be rough, homie, right? That kind of thing literally made a mobile filing cabinet which to be fair in hindsight after serving in the military i should have been able to recognize that the mail truck that i grew up with was absolutely a military grade piece of equipment built by the cheapest bidder <laughs> i mean this is what i drove in the military the humvee ambulance and i mean the similarities are there i mean bit. they both look like the blueprints for them were drawn by a third grader that didn't know how to draw a car yet and then the 3d renderings were made out of fucking legos now to be fair though while i have driven the humvee ambulance and it's a miserable experience i've never driven a mail truck so I don't actually know what that's like so i i actually wonder how humvees are to drive not that i have the ability to drive i mean i guess hummers but i don't i don't have the credit score for hummer we're gonna put it that way i would say i'm looking at probably upper 800s if i was looking for upper 800s with probably like 30 percent down if i was gonna get a hummer the gas is also gonna kill me but like you know hummer's probably the closest i can get from a civilian point of view right God, I'd love to go for a ride in a Hummer. Like, I'll shoot Humvee. That'd be wild. That'd be interesting. Turn to the internet because surely some mailman has written something somewhere on the planet that is going to tell me what that experience is like. And here's what I found. Quote, regular driving around town was pretty bearable, but driving the LLV on the highway shouldn't even be legal. I've had to do it a few times, and those times were probably the most terrified I've been while operating any motor vehicle. Oh, wow. I thought these things were strictly suburban. I didn't know these things that actually go across highway. Riding a motorcycle over 100 miles an hour? No problem. Merging onto the highway in a mail truck? You couldn't pay me to do it again. That's wild. The sluggish acceleration, deafening noise, and harsh vibration were all bad enough. 
But knowing the body of the vehicle would crush like a soda can in an accident is what made it such a frightening experience. Oh, so you are the crumple zone. Oh, no. Nope, I was right, because that is to a T what it's like to drive a military ambulance. I got one of those things going 75 one time thanks to an enormous hill, and it felt oh, no. like I was re-entering the Earth's atmosphere <laughs> as everything that wasn't strapped down rattled out of place and started falling to the floorboard. Now, I don't know... Is, th is this the normal experience? Is this the normal experience? I'd be very curious on if this is just the standard experience. This for certain, but driving a Humvee or an LLV really fast kind of seems like anal beads, you know? The faster you go, the bumpier it gets, and if you go too fast, there's going to be shit everywhere. What did he just say? Yeah, actually. No, that... But that's why enemas exist. But you, ha you have to prep that, right? Like, sure, you can. You can not do that. It's just cleaner. I would argue more pleasurable. Not that I've done it myself, but where where did we get on with this stuff? What is happening now? <laughs> we completely got off the rails on this one. Okay. Brian, this does not seem appropriate to watch in front of the baby. Now, to be fair to the Grumman male cat, is it a turd? Absolutely, but it is really really tough because here's some of the testing criteria the llv had to be able to meet before it would be adopted as the usps postal vehicle uh we have drive 5760 miles at 55 miles an hour with oh, wow. zero malfunctions and zero broken parts Makes drive 11520 miles at 45 miles an hour on, on gravel, gravel okay. with zero malfunctions and zero broken parts drive 2880 miles stopping every 250 feet accelerating to at least 15 miles an hour in between oh my god that's not that one sounds awful you couldn't pay me to do that one that would sound like that would just be just oof. between stops with zero malfunctions and zero broken parts drive 960 miles on cobblestone zero broken parts drive 960 miles over potholes ensuring that every single wheel hits the pothole at least 35,000 <laughs> times with zero broken parts. <laughs> to accomplish that, they took a Chevy S10 chassis, shortened the wheelbase so it could have a tighter turn radius, and then made the entire body of the vehicle out of aluminum so it couldn't rust. So Adam- So here's the thing is that like, those specifications in themselves, I mean, and someone would have to confirm if these are arbitrary specifications or not. I mean, some of these sound incredibly reasonable, right? You need to go X amount of distance. You, you have ABC uh, DEF trials, and you have to go X amount of uh, mileage over Y, and there can be absolutely no deviation. There can be no failure. There can be no broken parts, anything like that. That is an ability to quality control that, despite it going to the lowest bidder. At the very least, I see this as a good thing, but once again, if you have post office or or uh, military experience in regards to military grade, quote unquote. I mean, are, would these be arbitrary or do you think that this is incredibly fair as requirements? The minimum, at least it's tough. Despite yeah. the fact that it is really tough, it is finally time to start replacing the United States Postal Service carrier vehicle because, well, the engine that they put in these things is an engine from the 1970s known oh, as wow. the Iron Duke, and this bad boy's getting like nine miles to the gallon. This is the Oof. same engine they were putting in the Cavalier and the Trailer Park Ferrari back in the day. I mean, the Pontiac Fiero. <laughs> Don't laugh, the Pontiac Fiero was high-class white trash, okay? The only thing cooler than that when I was growing up was the 2002 Dale Earnhardt Edition Monte Carlo. Sorry, I'm getting this I'm going to be honest. I have no clue who Dale Earnhardt is. And I'm immediately going to get people just being like, Kip, you're going to watch this now. I'm going to be like, I don't. OK, I, I guess I'm just getting the uh, the crash course condensed Dale Earnhardt experience in the comment section. <laughs> I hear a lot of Billy Hubbard talk about it over on TikTok. Oh, I spend way too much time on Southern TikTok. I, I should never enter a holler. I probably won't actually come back. I'll probably just, you know, have an entire thing of cans and maybe not steal a cow and try to put it in a sedan. But there are people that would. What mad lads. The main problem with the LLV is the gas mileage, okay? Because it only gets nine miles to the gallon, you have to realize this is like the biggest fleet of vehicles that the United States has. There's over 140,000 of these things, meaning that for every single penny that gas prices go up, the U.S. Postal Service has to spend an additional $8 million on fuel alone. And right. this is the part where you're like, oh, America's capitalist. That's fine. That's the cost of doing business. Just raise the prices of your services and it's covered. It's no big deal. You would problem. think that, but remember, the U.S. Postal Service is a government-regulated monopoly, meaning that any time they want to change their pricing, the government has to sign off on it, and the government takes forever to do anything. Another example... 
Uh, that's the one. What was it? I had something described recently, and it's like Supreme, the Supreme Court, like the National Supreme Court, is like booked out 18 months or something like that. Someone would have to quote me the actual thing. And unless a case really needs to get expedited, like really needs to get expedited, you can maybe, I think, get three to six months out with all of that expedited paperwork being done. Like, it takes forever. Can you imagine if I'm like... And don't get like going wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm taking some React content a little bit slower nowadays. But can you imagine if like this video came out and I got to it in like December of 2026, right? Like people would get rightfully upset. Like Kip, like this is one of this is a fat electrician. He puts out a really great video, right? Or if I said like, hey, you know, I'm going to do this this month, and then I don't put it out. For, actually, it kind of sounds like the main channel. <laughs> I have nothing on the main channel. Mostly, it's just. I hate being a perfectionist. Don't be a perfectionist. It's awful. Well, you get what I'm saying, right? Like, if I worked in a, if I worked in fast food again, say for example, which I had a really interesting dream about that last night, and I was, you know, oh well, I'll go, get, I'll get this this well done burger in the next hour, right? Customers are gonna be pissed at me, right? Just do it, and then that gets into the whole world of politics, the whole world of well, I want to do this, but people want me to do why? So uh, I don't know. That's why I support a lot of. Uh, People are electricians, people that work at plants, people that, uh, you know, do hard labor, blue collar workers. Why well, support a lot of y'all? Because, oh boy, military too, because you guys actually get shit done, which I respect immensely. Example of this would be like the power company, right? Because you can't shop around for different power providers no. the same way you look for like an internet service provider or a cell phone provider. You only have one power company available where you live the same way you only have one post office available where you live. Any well, in Idaho, we have like two. I think it's like CenturyLink and whatever Cable One became. I think it's Sparklight now. We really don't have choice. And even then, like, I, I get interrupted consistently. I've tried reaching out and they've said, oh, we'll get back to you. And they never get back to me. And it's like, all right, well, I guess I'll just deal with interrupted service despite, you know, like having evidence that, you know, oh, well, we, we don't uh, we don't leave our customers hanging. And, you know, uh, you know, we, we would never prioritize others. I'm like, mate, I used to live in a situation. It took you six months to get out to fix an Internet box. And then immediately in the next few days, someone hit that Internet box again, the out the box outside. Right. Immediately, someone in the next two days hit that. I was furious because it just takes someone just now nah, I'm just going to back into this and suddenly your internet is back to crap again. And I uh, can't stand that. But, and yeah, that also leads into issues as well, where you'll have power companies, right? And they'll be set up on auto pay and they'll withdraw auto pay. Like they'll either not withdraw the auto pay, even though there's funds in the account or they'll like double dip into the auto pay. And then suddenly you're negative on your account. You have to call the power company and they go, well, there's nothing we can really do about that. And it's like, excuse you, you were set to pull out once this month. Why are you pulling out multiple times? You were not authorized to do this. Let's have a chat here. And then it's just, it's because they're the only company in the area. This comes with being the only entity in the area that can do certain things. These are stressors of having a monopoly, duopoly, etc. Anytime the power company wants to raise their rates, the government has to sign off on it, and it's a huge deal. Same thing applies to the postal service and stamps or anything else. Because mm. of this, they can't effectively adapt and change their prices, so it's a humongous issue. So right. how do we solve this? Well, there's two options. You could A, get rid of the monopoly that's set in place because it's no longer effective for what it was originally supposed to mm. do by helping the USPS, and now it's actually hindering them more than it's helping because they're no longer able to change their prices to actually be competitive. Or you could B make them get different vehicles. And obviously we're absolutely 100% of the time gonna go with B because the US government or any government ever really is never ever gonna give up control and they have control over the USPS and they're never ever gonna let that go. They would rather see that thing burn to the ground than give up control over it. So obviously the USPS is getting new vehicles. But then that bites the US Postal Service in the ass because remember they're a government agency and they can't just like go to Toyota and be like, hey Toyota, that new truck that you guys just came out with that's mm -hmm. $10,000 and really cool. Can we buy a bunch of those for fleet vehicles? No, they can't do that. They have to figure out the specs they want. Then they have to send that out and let all these defense contractors bid on them. And then after they bid, they have to give the defense contractors millions of dollars so that they can develop the new vehicle. So they're going to pay for all the R&D up front. And then when Oshkosh Defense wins the bid with this fucking thing that looks <laughs> like it was animated by Pixar, the other company that they beat is going to turn around and 
file a lawsuit and sue because they're saying that it wasn't a fair enough competition, despite the fact that the US taxpayers literally gave them all the money for R&D in the first place. And then and I, this is all just office politics. Like what once why I respect people in the military, why I respect rednecks, why I respect you know, just people that can actually just hey, I I need this new vehicle. What can you do for me? Uh get me a 30 pack. Give me some WD-40, some flex tape, a camper off a 1997 Ford. We, we can make this happen, right? And then you just get it done, right? At a certain point, you get so just overburdened with the office politics, the decorum. It, it's just like, okay, can we actually do something, though, right? It's like, I'm so over it. <laughs> I don't know if that's just me personally. I don't know if it's because I worked in office jobs. Like, I cannot stand some of the stuff that happens with this. The amount of paperwork that has to get filed. The amount of steps, you know, checks and balances this has to go through. I'm like, can we actually just get some work done at this point? Come on now. We know what we got to do. We know how we got to do it. Just let's just do this the easy and efficient way. But then again, this is probably why I'm not a government official. <laughs> <laughs> you know, point in case made, actually. And that's going to delay the whole project more. And then bottom line, it's going to take 20 fucking years to fix the issue. The yeah. entire time, the U.S. Postal Service is struggling and trying to figure shit out while the government refuses to let them actually do their job and be fucking competitive. And it just sucks because the U.S. Postal Service is sacred. There's nothing more sacred to society than the mailman. All I yeah. wanted, all I wanted to do was have a happy, lighthearted video because I thought it was funny that Northrop Grumman was making mail trucks. And now after we researching it. I'm going to get upset every time I watch my mail lady deliver the mail because I'm going to recognize that she's wearing a parka and overalls inside of her vehicle because the heater barely works because yeah. she's driving a 40 year old mail truck that's a piece of shit because the government fucks up everything they even get near touching. So in conclusion, I guess yeah. that's the story of why mail trucks are made by defense contractors and if you're a mail carrier, I've always appreciated you, but I'm going to be honest, I have another level of appreciation for what you do. They because Thank I you. truly, genuinely had no idea the levels of bureaucratic bullshit that you had to hurdle on your way to get mail into my mailbox. So thank you. Seriously, thank you. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang, out. No, that, that, thing. The fact that fat you know, electrician. The more history I read, the less I trust the government. And maybe, <laughs> just maybe. <laughs> That's why in the American education system, oh. they emphasize math and science and English way more than they emphasize history. The tinfoil hat. Oh boy, this is going to be good. <laughs> no, I like that he does that. I like that he thanks these mail, you know, postal workers. And absolutely, if you're a postal worker and you're watching this, thank you so much for what you do and what you put up with and how much you have to deal with and how crappy these vehicles can be at times. Like, oh my God, you have my respect, 100%. Like, you had me respect before this video. You have it more now. Like, that's the thing. You never know what people are going through. Even if you didn't know what you now know because of this video, right? What mail carriers have to go through, how bureaucratic it is, how office politics, how many, how many office politics and hurdles they have to just go through to even request basic, you know, heating and stuff in the vehicle to so not, you know, feel like they're going to die every time they go on the highway, right? Like... Just have respect for other people. That being said, respect is earned. If someone's going to be a crappy person to you, absolutely, you don't have to deal with them, right? If someone is going to come up to you and they're going to try to just, you know, you know, oh, I hear you like 45 ACP. My 9 millimeter is better, though. You know, you're, you should feel quite crap for liking that 45 ACP and get bent. <laughs> like my 45, leave me alone, right? Like at that point, if someone's going to harass you, if someone's going to attack you like that, don't take it. So just... Respect, yes, is earned, but also just be kind to others. And if you see your mail person, hey, maybe say, hey, thank you for uh, thank you for doing all you do. I really do appreciate it. And it may seem inconsequential. It may seem insignificant to you. But I promise you that there is a difference. Even just going out to eat and stuff, right? You know, when your waiter says, is there anything I can get you? Oh, just water, please, and thank you. Stacking your plates in a way that makes sense. That's not going to have, you know, more mess for them to clean up, you know? Uh, just be, being nice, being kind goes a long way in dealing with people and helping people just generally have a better day. But alas, that is... Uh, 
that is my rant on that subject. We ranted a few times in this, didn't we? Thank you everyone for watching. If you haven't checked out the Fat Electrician, go ahead and fat, check out the Fat Electrician. Absolutely amazing individual. Puts out a lot of great content and really just straight to the point. No BS. Let's let's talk about this. I have immense respect for him. Definitely go check him out. Can't wait for him to hit over 2 million subscribers because I know he's got it in him. And uh, if you are a postal worker or a trucker as well, because truckers also kind of fall into a similar vein, thank you for everything that you do. You guys help keep society running. You really do. Like, you guys really don't get enough recognition. Thank you for everything that you do. And until next time, that has been Kip and the Fat Electrician uh, Grumman LLV video. And I'll see you all in the next one.